lovelies, my name is Nox Papio, and today I'll teach you how to use the blending tool in Clips U Paint Pro. As some of you might have noticed, I originally made a similar tutorial over three years ago. My issue is that I forgot quite a lot of things in the original tutorial. And this is why we're making the video today. By the way, if you'd like to see the original video, I'll try to leave a link in the top right corner. Now, without further ado, let's get started! Alright, you've got Clip Studio Paint open, you did your drawing warm-ups, perfect! Like I first mentioned in the intro today, we'll be focusing on the blending tool. To begin, you can find the blend tool in your tool panel. Has a little side note, depending on how you've set up your workspace, it might be elsewhere. When you click on the blend tool icon, you will see six different brushes in your subtool panel. In order, they are Blend tool, blur tool, fingertip, running color and fiber, suiting watercolor, and rough color blend. Each of these tools can be used by themselves or in tandem with each other. As its name implies, you use the blending tool to blend two or more colors. They like this as well as blending them into transparency. You can blend colors together, mix them up. You can blur the borders between colors or even details using the blur tool, like this. With both the blending tool and blurring tool combined, you can make some cool effects. This tool allows you to smudge your colors together, like you were using your real fingers. This particular tool has a textured brush tip, as you can see here. Kind of like if you were planning paint with a cotton ball, I guess. Some potential uses for this tool could be for making tie-dye patterns or painting clouds. Or even a stereo sky. Just had some sparkles in your set. If you're looking for a watercolor style, look no further than this tool. Just like the previous tool, this one has a textured brush tip. It looks just like brush strokes. Last but not least, here's the rough color blend. Maybe the regular blending tool doesn't quite cut it for you, that's alright. If you want something with a bit more grit, you can always use the rough color blending tool. You can play with the brush density and making small circles does help. Like right now, it's at 25. If, say, I set it to 50, the blending effect is going to be a little bit stronger. And if I put it all the way up to 100, then it's going to be way stronger, just like that. Now, let's say you don't like the default settings, or they aren't quite what you're looking for. In your tool properties setting panel, you have different options with which you can play and experiment. At the bottom right corner of the panel, you have two icons. This first one right here resets all of your settings to the default state. Like this. While the wrench icon right here is where you can find all of brush tool settings. As you can see, depending on what tools you're currently using, some settings will be set to visible in your tool property panel. Like right now, this is a blending tool. So, there's gonna be the color mixing turned on. Meanwhile, for, let's say, the pen tools, it's not actually turned on. 
Well, some are invisible, like this. Right now, we can see the opacity to, um, option or the intensity of the blur. Some other options are set to invisible. If, say, you want them to be visible, you just have to go to what setting you want and then turn it on. And then it appears in your tool property panel right here you can even change the texture or brush tips of your blending tools like for example i would go there and maybe um let's say i want a bat and then just size it up and there you're blending with bats just like that if you want it to be a triangle shape, you can. If you want stars or hearts, go to your heart's content. Art is about expressing oneself and experimenting, so go wild and have fun creating. Okay, so maybe you really don't like any of the default planning tools, and you need something else. Again, if you look at the sub, again, if this time around, if you look at the subtool panels bottom right, you will find three more icons. The box with a downward arrow is the important is the importing tool. If you found exciting brushes that you'd like to use on the Clip Studio asset store, you can either go directly to your download folder and drag and drop your brush. Or you can click on this icon and then find your brush and import it that way. The one in the middle right here is to duplicate an existing brush and use it as a base to make your own. Like for example, I could duplicate this brush and give it a different name, change the tool icon. Right now it's a blending tool, so we can leave this icon like this, but you have different options. And you could decide to pick a uh, background color for your your tool. Let's go with purple because purple is a nice color. And boom, you have your new brush. And then you'd go in your settings, change the brush chip. Here, let's go with a heart. And voila, you're in business. And you can also play with the all the other different settings. Like this. And the last one here, well, it's for deleting your brush. Like this. Now, the cool thing is that if you're looking to use blending tools, you're not actually limited to just these tools here. If you're using either the watercolor brushes or oil brushes, you can blend just as well. Like for example, I got a flat oil brush and I can blend the colors into themselves like this. Most of the paint brushes have very similar settings to the blending tools. Not all of them, but most of them. And if, let's say, you wanted the India ink paint brushes, which right now can it's really blend, you could go in your settings and just turn on color mixing. this and just play around with the settings until you're happy with them depending on what you're doing as for example the gel painting you're better off using the actual paint brushes instead however if you're doing say anime or comic style illustrations those blending tools combined with the lasso tool right here or the polyline or ellipse or selection pan 
or for example um the option the quick mask option like this one can be quite handy and that really depends on what your needs are and so this was my updated version for my blending tool tutorial I really hope that it helped some of you, and I am terribly sorry for taking so long to reply to my comments on the original video. If you have any suggestions for other tutorials, don't hesitate to write them down in the comments down below. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all beautiful people next time. Later!